Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Monday, April 24th. The Flagler County unemployment rate checked in at 3.2% for March of 2023. That's Greg Blase, president and CEO of the Palm Coast Flagler Regional Chamber of Commerce. He explains what's keeping the Flagler County unemployment rate so low. We're seeing an increase in residents acquiring jobs, and as a result, we're also seeing an increase in the number of participants within our labor force. So another way to think about this is the jobs that are being filled in our community are also bringing people with them. So as more people move here, the labor force grows, and so too do the opportunities for employment. Blase says the unemployment rate could drop lower. Closer we get to these super hot summer months, that means tourism starts to pick up. Those tourism jobs and hiring will continue to grow. So for now, the 3.2% unemployment rate holding steady is good news. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. A reckless driver caused a four-vehicle crash on I-95 early Saturday morning, resulting in the closure of both directions of the highway and sending two people to area hospitals. The incident occurred just south of the Flagler-St. Johns County line. According to the Florida Highway Patrol, a 27-year-old man was riding a motorcycle north and passing cars by using the right emergency shoulder lane when he crashed into an abandoned SUV on the shoulder. The collision caused significant debris to scatter onto the northbound lanes, which led to subsequent collisions involving two other SUVs. The motorcyclist, who was wearing a helmet and carrying a firearm, was transported to Halifax Hospital with serious injuries. The driver of one of the SUVs involved in the crash was taken to to Advent Health in Palm Coast. Authorities are still searching for the owner or occupant of the abandoned SUV, and the investigation is ongoing. We don't know exactly how high the concentration of what types of pharmaceuticals are in the specific fish that people are eating. So there are a lot of kind of scary unknown variables. A study by Florida International University found high levels of pharmaceuticals in Florida redfish. Matanzas Riverkeeper Jen Lumberk tells Liz Ryan more about this concerning find. Scientists and anglers sampled redfish in nine estuaries. Pharmaceuticals were present in all nine of the estuaries. They found an average of 2.1 drugs per fish and a maximum of five drugs in some fish. She says what kind of pharmaceuticals they found. Cardiovascular medications, opioid pain relievers, and psychoactive medications. We are a very medicated society. And how they're getting there. These pharmaceuticals are likely coming from our wastewater treatment facility. There are remedies for this. Flushing pharmaceuticals down your toilet is pretty much akin to dumping them into a river. Instead, keep an eye out for community collection days hosted by a local hospital or a police department so that they will properly be disposed of. And upgrading our water treatment facilities. Older wastewater treatment facilities have fairly rudimentary treatment capacities, so they're not treating things like the chemicals that are found in pharmaceuticals. They're really focused on bacteria and pathogens, things that are coming from human waste, and not necessarily these more complex chemicals. So the long-term solution is definitely going to be updating our wastewater treatment facilities across the entire state. She says that septic to sewer conversions can help as well. Hooking up some of those systems that are close to waterways or commonly inundated by flood events during hurricanes and nor'easters, that is certainly a way to help out with the treatment. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Liz Ryan. Assistance is available for Flagler County senior citizens experiencing a home energy crisis. The county's senior services program manager, Winnie Costello, describes the emergency home energy assistance program. If you received a late notice or a final notice or a past due notice for your Florida Power and Light bill, we would be able to assist you by paying that bill if you met the income criteria as well as 60 and over. And we also have assistance to help with repairing AC units or replacing them up to $5,000. The program is funded by the state. We received this grant from the Department of Elder Affairs. 
And you get a lot of people calling, stating that they can't pay their electric bill due to paying other bills with inflation. So it seems to be a problem throughout Flagler County. And of course, the majority of the people that we're serving do live in Palm Coast because they have the largest population. The program does not pay water bills or for gas or propane used for cooking or to heat water. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. Palm Coast Deputy Clerk earns a certification. Palm Coast Deputy City Clerk Kaylee Cook attained her certified municipal clerk certification from the International Institute of Municipal Clerks. The official pinning ceremony was held recently during the Palm Coast City Council business meeting. Here's Palm Coast Mayor David Alfin. Because it's not just about what happens in the city today. City Council is responsible for what happens tomorrow and obviously for the years to come. So this is that example of what we do every day to provide for the future. So congratulations. We're humbled and honored to uh, to have you on board. Alphan adds only 30% of the 14,755 members of the IIMC have attained the certified municipal clerk designation. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.